Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 o'clock, a father is heartbroken after learning his son was one of the five people killed by mm. fentanyl in a Commerce City apartment. Still really seems like the dream or whatever, you know, it's just not reality. Fentanyl's no good, man. It's, it's the devil. So this morning we're going in depth on fentanyl's most common forms and how Colorado is responding to this ongoing epidemic. The U.S. is preparing to issue tough sanctions against Russia as Vladimir Putin orders forces into two key regions of Ukraine. We're also getting new photos of troops gathering at the border. And temperatures have tumbled down to the single digits way worse. Once you factor in the wind chills, hey. uh, our team is tracking conditions on a Denver 7 weather action day. It feels well below zero across much of the Front Range, and that can just make it difficult to function. So we're going to help <laughs> you get through this bitter cold. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. I'm Nicole Brady. The Colorado Avalanche Center also warning this week that our state could see the most dangerous conditions so far this season. Here's a look at current avalanche conditions. You can see most of the country, high country is under moderate risk right now. The level of danger is expected to increase, though, as these storms come through, bringing us more snow. So we have team coverage this morning to help you stay safe during this prolonged freeze. Uh, we start with our team here, meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo, because it will be a few days before we bounce back. We won't be above freezing until Saturday afternoon. Right. Oh. And <laughs> Jason's thrilled. Uh, take a look at our 24 hour temper, uh, temperature change here within. Well, yesterday we were waking up to temps right around 40 to even 45 degrees. It's now 35 to more than 40 degrees colder than the same time yesterday when that cold front raced through we saw temperatures out at the airport uh, drop significantly we really went from about oh 55 to 32 within well less than an hour yesterday so this is a strong cold arctic air mass and right now it's zero in denver it feels like about 20 degrees below we picked up some light snow overnight again snow is not going to be the big story with this storm at least not for us here across the plains it's going to be our temperatures now these are current temps not even wind chills take a look at spot Spots like Nederland and Blackhawk coming in at about 10 to 15 degrees below zero this morning, and we're right around zero here in town. So your wake up forecast, it'll wake you up. We're going to be at about 10 degrees by 10 o'clock. We will see temperatures climb. It looks like to right around 10 to near 12 with a chance again for some light snow. That snow is going to be off and on again here for the next few days with then some drier weather, Jason, by Thursday. And I'll show you what that looks like on our future cast coming up. And some areas are worse than others, like up in Boulder. I've seen total snow cover right now. In some of the roads. It's over 28th and uh, Colorado Avenue right near the uh, Colorado Event Center. You can see how much snow we have on the roadways, and so it's very slick for us, not only on, but also off the major roadways there in Boulder and around Boulder and Boulder County. Take a look at the other quad split, though, and you can see down at C470. Doesn't look too bad. You have some snow in between lanes. This is 225 over by Alameda. There was a report of a crash around 6th Avenue and uh, I-25. I'm not seeing it yet. And then uh, I-25 and Lincoln Avenue. Again, you're looking at some wet conditions. There's so much de-icer down on the roadways right now that it's really going to help out. You're going to see a lot of that wetness. So it looks wet, but that's just a lot of the de-icer that's trying to work. I'm not seeing any big slowdowns. It looks like it's just a, maybe a misfiring sensor out there on C470. And the overall drive looks like speeds are in the 50s for the most part, wherever you want to go. Thank you, Jason. Well, as Lisa mentioned, uh, we are expecting temperatures or wind chills, especially at or below zero with mm. this storm, and that can be dangerous. Yeah, it takes just about a half hour for skin exposed to sub zero temperatures to start developing frostbite. An emergency room doctor says that's why it's so important to dress in layers and stay dry. The frostbite injuries are typically in the fingers and toes, those kind of things. And they're typically in areas that are exposed to cold temperatures for prolonged periods of time or if those clothing is wet. If it's wet and cold, much more risk for getting frostbite. If you feel a prickling or numbness you or see your skin changing colors, that is a definite indication that you need to get inside to a warm place. Yeah. And these cold temperatures are incredibly dangerous for people living on the streets. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta continues our team coverage this morning. Uh, she's out in it, uh, and, and we know hundreds of people brave the elements almost every night. There is a local shelter making sure people have a warm place to stay, though. There is, and you guys said it, these next couple of days are going to be brutally cold. So if you're not dressed for it, if you don't have six layers on or even more, depending on how much you can take, it's going to be really hard on you. And that's why shelters all across the Denver area, they are doing what they can to make sure our homeless neighbors have a warm place to stay overnight. 
the Salvation Army's Crossroads Center. This is just one of the many helping out right now. They're actually increasing their capacity so they can help as many people out as possible. Usually they have room for about 300 men to have a bed to sleep on at night in the shelter, but because of these frigid temperatures, the center has bumped up their capacity by 80 beds. So they're not stopping there. The building itself has room for about 540 people. So even if someone doesn't get a bed, if they've reached that capacity of now 380, they're still welcoming them in to come inside, take a seat, sleep wherever they can, and just stay as warm as possible. Christian Ballyut, she's the Denver Metro Social Services Director with the Salvation Army. She says there are a couple of ways we can help our homeless neighbors with the cold temps over the next couple of days. And if somebody is walking down the street and sees somebody who is of concern, um, even if they don't feel comfortable reaching out to that person um, to, to urge them to go into shelter, have them reach out to the police or to the STAR program, which can be accessed through 911. It's very important. And somebody can fall asleep and very easily not wake up um, due to this weather. And just so you all know, Crossroads, it's just a men's center, Catholic Charities, they serve women, and then the Urban Peak Shelter serves teens. Both of those are also expanding their capacity over the next couple of days to help as many out there as possible. And you heard Kristen mention Denver Police and the STAR program. Both agencies are going to be out patrolling, making sure that anybody out there who needs a place to stay, even if it's just a warm bed or a warm place to sit for a couple of hours, has access to that. We're in Denver this morning. I'm Veronica Costa, Denver Summit. Yeah, so important right now. Thank you, Veronica. You can always track conditions for your neighborhood anytime by downloading the free Denver 7 Plus app for either your cell phone or your streaming device. We have a 24-7 weather stream there, also a radar and an hour-by-hour -hour forecast. You can download it now to Roku, Amazon, Apple, or Android devices. Well, it has been an emotional 48 hours for neighbors in Commerce City, and now family and friends are remembering the five people killed by a deadly dose of fentanyl. Number 7's Colette Bordelon joins us now. And Colette, this is a reminder. We just don't know what's in the drugs circulating out there right now. Yeah, guys, illicit fentanyl, it's being found in all kinds of street drugs across the country and Colorado, cut into counterfeit pills posing as oxycodone or Xanax. That's one of the most common forms. The synthetic opioid is meant to treat severe pain. The DEA estimates it's 100 times more powerful than morphine. After this weekend, a father says that drug is the devil. Dan Marquez talked with us from his porch in North Denver. He still can't believe what happened. His son Sam is one of five people who died from fentanyl poisoning in Commerce City. He also lost a daughter-in-law and son-in-law. He believes the group thought they were doing cocaine. The district attorney confirmed the cause of death was fentanyl. Most of the time, people don't know that's what they're taking. The tragedy is the latest destruction caused by the dangerous drug in our state. And for those who have lost the people they love, keeping their memory alive, it's key. Making sure they're not overshadowed by the substance that took them away. Sam, he's, he's a good guy. He's 24. Loved his job. Always talking about his job, talking about his new daughter. He loved his daughter. He said, that's the new love of my life. It's absolutely heartbreaking. His son's newborn daughter was in a bedroom of the apartment at the time. A sixth adult also survived. Later in the show, I'm breaking down drug-related death numbers in our state. The majority are from opioids and are primarily being fueled by fentanyl. Live in studio, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. New overnight, American diplomats still in Ukraine were moved to Poland for safety reasons as the threat of Russia invading intensifies. Ukraine's president is now urging world leaders to impose sanctions to prevent further escalation. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest from Washington. This morning, the U.S. is expected to impose significant new sanctions on Russia after President Vladimir Putin recognized two pro-Russia breakaway regions of Ukraine as independent and then deployed troops to those rebel-held areas, escalating fears of an all-out war on Ukraine any day now. We are going to be imposing significant sanctions uh, on Russia. Overnight, in a rare U.N. Security Council emergency meeting, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield calling the move by Russia unprovoked and a clear attack on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. This move by President Putin is clearly the basis for Russia's attempt to create a pretext for a further invasion of Ukraine. He has since announced that he will place Russian troops in these regions. He calls them peacekeepers. 
This is nonsense. We know what they really are. Greenfield says Putin's actions in Ukraine are a threat, not just to Ukraine, but to the world at large. New satellite images show some of the Russian forces are now less than six miles from the border. The White House urging Ukraine's president to leave the capital for his own safety. Zelensky posting a video to social media in the early morning hours, telling his countrymen and women they are strong and ready, and saying, quote, we are not afraid of anyone or anything. We don't owe anyone anything, and we won't give anything to anyone. Hours earlier, Putin, in a fiery speech suggesting Ukraine is not an independent nation, but a country with blood and family ties to Russia. If the Russians go into that country, they are on, uh, they are going to have a fight like they never imagined. It's going to get very ugly, very bloody, and it may be something that Mr. Putin is not ready to accept. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken is expected to meet with the Ukrainian foreign minister here in Washington sometime today. The message here, the U.S. stands firmly with Ukraine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. It is now 5-11. It's a Denver 7 weather action day. Now, it doesn't matter how cold it is. There will be people out walking today. We're looking at temperatures down to near zero this morning on your dog walking forecast. And this afternoon, we might hit 10. You're going to find a lot of cities that don't even get into the double digits today with a chance for more light snow. We'll take a look at that on Futurecast coming up. And there will be some brave souls on their bikes. Uh, and it is very slick on some of those bike lanes. They have not been plowed. Sidewalks, obviously, not plowed really or shoveled. This is northbound Broadway right here in Inglewood. You see some slick conditions transitioning from here to some of the side roads. Really tough as all the side roads are pretty much covered in snow right now. Well, Denver is earning some top recognition today for having hard workers where we rank in a new national survey. Colorado lawmakers are trying to make the streets safer for cyclists. The new proposal to get people through dangerous intersections.